Hello, my JavaScript Jamstack pals out in YouTube land. My name is John and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can set up a Jamstack website and host it for free using Cloudflare pages. Now, it seems like everyone's jumping on the static site bandwagon these days and Cloudflare pages is the next way that allows us to host JavaScript Jamstack static site pages for free in the interweb. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is I'll walk you through the process of setting up Cloudflare pages with Next.js. We're going to kind of look at serverless functions quickly. And then more importantly, I think, is we're going to start comparing the features offered by Cloudflare pages against my personal favorite, Netlify. And we're going to see how um, Cloudflare pages stacks up. So is it good? Should we use it? In what circumstances should we use Cloudflare pages, maybe even Netlify, if they are any? Now, if this type of content is of use to you and you love it, then smash that subscribe button. I do weekly YouTube videos on productivity, JavaScript, Jamstack, CMS, loads of stuff. So if you want to become a better developer, smash subscribe, don't lose content, don't be a numpty, do it now. Now, the first thing we're going to do in this video is have a quick overview of the Next.js website. So let's jump there now. The Next.js application that you're about to see in this video is available to clone from my GitHub. So if you go over to John D. Jones POC, then you can go over there. It's called the Cloudflare Pages dash Next.js application. The link for it's below. However, if you want to go mental and play with this at home, do your best. Now, the one thing that we need to think about when we're doing our Next.js and creating static sites is we need to update this build command. Now, this isn't necessarily a Cloudflare specific thing. This is just a Next.js static site thing. So all we need to do is an um, npm is a next export. And then if we run this, what will happen is npm run and build is we're going to get a number of static files being generated. And all of our static files are going to get generated in this out folder. So when we're configuring Cloudflare pages, what you'll need to do is remember this build command because we'll need this for the setup and you'll need to remember this out folder command. That's pretty much it. Now, the other thing of note in this application is I've also got this underscore redirects and underscore headers. And this is how we can configure Cloudflare pages in our code. So obviously you guess from the underscore redirects in here, you can put a bunch of rules and this is going to allow you to set up redirects pretty handy. Now, if you're creating something like an API or you're doing some, you know, security or you need to lock things down, you can also do this underscore headers. And this is going to allow you to add in or remove HTML headers into a quest. So as you can see here, I'm adding in um, allow origin star for my CMS. So say if I was doing an API, this would get rid of a cause issue and it would allow anyone to call my API. And here I'm just adding a very silly HTML header. But that's pretty much everything you need to know. Bang out a normal Next.js application using create Next.js app, push it into your GitHub, and then jobs are good. Getting started with Cloudflare pages, super simple, and it's also free. So all you need to do is go to your good friend Google, type in Cloudflare pages, click on the number one result. From here, you're gonna see one of those amazing portals full of bubbed words, Jamstack, developer focused, advanced collaboration, yeah. Why don't they just write some non blurby um, sign up pages? So if you're new to Cloudflare, then you're going to have to hit the sign up button. If you're not you, like me, you can just click in the login button. So once you get to the Cloudflare pages dashboard, you're going to be able to create a new application or host a new application. The way it works is all you need to do is push your code into GitHub or the GitLab. And from here, you can quickly and easily host something. So as you can see, I've hooked up my GitHub account. From here, you can see that I've got my Cloudflare pages at Next.js. So all I need to do is click on that and then begin setup. So as you can see, I'm going to call my project name. We'll just call it Cloudflare pages next. I'm going to use my main production branch. Now this is kind of important. If you want to do preview branches, stuff like that, you're going to have to do PRs. So you only want your production branch building here. Next up, you need to set in your build commands. So remember that we had npm run build. That's where we had this one. 
And then we also need to put in the output directory, which if you remember was out. Now, another important thing here is that because I'm using the latest version of Next.js, which uses Node 12.22.0, at the moment, Cloudflare is stuck on Node 12.18.0. So what we need to do in here is put in Node version, and this needs to be 12.22.0. And if we don't do this, the build's gonna fail. So now all we need to do is click Save and Deploy. What's gonna happen is Cloudflare is gonna go off it's going to start building our website it's going to generate us a free url that we can start using and in a few minutes what we'll find is this is going to build you have seen how easy it is to configure and host a jamstack powered website using cloudflare pages now we have got to the good bits who is going to win in a fight Cloudflare Pages or Netlify. Fight! So what we're going to do in this section is do a bit of a comparison. So we're going to compare price, features, the UI, and the build time. And at the end, we're going to see which one is better to host your Jamstack site. The first comparison that we're going to make is on the build time. So I've got our repo. I published it to Cloudflare Pages. I've also published it to Netlify. So let's have a look at the results. Now, this isn't the most scientific test in the world because it is just a build. I've only done a few, but as you can see, Cloudflare pages, duration three minutes and 30 seconds. And in Netlify, we've got the duration of just under three minutes, so two minutes 47. So our build time is 40 seconds difference. And in general, I would say that I have noticed a longer build time using Cloudflare pages. So in this one, Netlify wins. You. Lose. Next, let's compare pricing. So probably for most hobby sites developers, the starter site is absolutely free for Netlify and Cloudflare pages. Now the pro edition, as you can see here, is $19 per month and it's $20 for our Cloudflare pages. And for the business edition, it's $200 a month. And for Netlify, it is only $100 a month. The other nice thing about Netlify is we also have the Enterprise Edition. Now this is for big corporate companies. However, we don't get that for Cloudflare pages. So in this, Netlify wins. You win. The next comparison is ease of setup and the ability to configure the build. Now we've already seen how easy it is to set everything up using Cloudflare pages. It took less than five minutes to get a site up and running in production. Now. Netlify is pretty much the same process. So just click on a new site from Git. Clicking on the GitHub repository. Then we're hooking everything up. I just pick the repo I want to hook up and Netlify does the rest. So I think in terms of setup, it's a draw. They're both really easy. Now, when it comes to actually configuration with the Cloudflare pages, we have that underscore redirects and we also have the underscore underscore header. And this definitely isn't as powerful as the netlify.toml file. So within Netlify Toml, which is their configuration file, you can do redirects and you can do headers. You can also do plugins and you can do post and pre-configuration tasks. So Netlify will allow you to do a lot more complicated things. So winner, Netlify. Next, let's talk about serverless functions. So you can do serverless functions in both. In Cloudflare, it's called workers rather than functions. And in Netlify, they stick with a good old serverless function name. So workers in Cloudflare is pretty nice. Now the workers are separate from your pages. So you can actually write your functions within Cloudflare dashboard, which is really cool, I think. So as you can see, we've got quick edit. From here, I can start editing my function. I've got this Postman style dashboard, which will allow me to then start querying. I can then view the preview and the results. I can also schedule my task to run as a cron job and I've got ways to debug it. So I can do all of this within the portal, which I think is really nice. Now, Netlify on the other hand, you have to create some um, NPM scripts. You also have to create a functions folder within your application and you have to deploy your functions within Netlify. And if I'm honest, sometimes getting the functions and stuff like reading files in Netlify can be a bit of a pain. So for me, in this instance, I think Cloudflare workers, winner. Final. 
Our final comparison is going to be against the UI and the capabilities provided by both platforms. Now, if I'm honest, Cloudflare Pages is brand new and it has limited options. So I think the UI is pretty bare bones. As you can see, we have some options of adding a custom domain to our static site. We can also add in some access policies and some web analytics. We can also do some very basic build configurations so we can change which branch triggers our deployments. We can also set a webhook. So if we're doing some headless CMS stuff, we can trigger a build remotely. And we've got some basic, you know, we can view a build and our configuration settings. Now, if I'm honest, when it comes to Netlify, the UI is a lot more polished. This one definitely floats my boat. And in terms of capabilities, you have a ton, a plethora of options in here. So let's have a look at some of them. I'm probably going to skip loads of them, but first we can change the site name. So this um, is really useful if you want to change the default one. We can add in our custom domains, obviously. Now we can also have this nice little build status badge. So simply copying this bit of markdown, adding it into your project readme.md, you're going to get this badge right here. Now we also have a ton of build options. We can obviously do the web hook. We can also have a lot more control over which branches trigger our deployments. So you can see we've got the main branch, we can trigger all branches, or we can configure individual branches. So this can be useful if you've got like a preview environment. Now there is loads of stuff to do in here. I mean, there's so much more compared to the Cloudflare pages. So we've got pre-rendering, post-rendering, snippet injection, all that sort of good stuff. Now, one of the key things, and I think Netlify does this better than everyone else, is how it manages atomic deployments. So when we're doing the jam stack, we've got a load of static websites. And each one of these the builds that you see here is going to be one set of static files. So it's very easy in here to switch between different branches. And our, our releases are just going to take sort of instance. Now, the one thing that Netlify does, which is great, is it allows you to lock a release to a certain set of files. So this can really help your release process. So let's say that we've locked our main branch to this. Every single time now that I trigger deploy, those files aren't automatically going to go live. Instead, what's going to happen is we're going to build up a number of deployments. Clicking on each deployment is going to give us a preview URL. And clicking on that preview URL means that we can test that our site actually looks okay before we deploy it. And if you're doing production enterprise level websites, this is a key feature. I think being able to roll back and roll forward, you can do both of those using Cloudflare Pages and Netlify. However, being able to lock that deployment is something you can only do in Netlify. And I think that's one of the main reasons why I think it is a great platform. Now, in terms of other capabilities, we can also install plugins in Netlify. So if you use Cypress for your integration tests, you can hook up the Cypress dashboard really easily or from within Netlify, that's really nice. We can also do identity, so logins, sign up forms. We've got um, the option to do form management. So when you're doing your form post back data, we can deal with that in Netlify. You also have the capability of doing split testing as well. And as you saw from Cloudflare Pages, we can also do analytics and large media. So we can do those in both. So I'm guessing, yeah, as you can see, the clear winner here in terms of the UI and capabilities, Netlify. And that concludes my comparison of Cloudflare Pages and Netlify. So what do you think at home? Leave a comment. Are you gonna start using Cloudflare Pages? Do you prefer Netlify? Now, I think for my comparison, it's pretty obvious that Netlify has been around for longer, it's more polished, and it has more capabilities. So why would you use Cloudflare Pages? Now, I think one really good use case that you can't do in Netlify is when we start thinking about micro frontends. Now, if you have a premium Cloudflare account, you'll also get access to a load balancer. And within this load balancer, you could very easily set up a micro frontend directing users to different parts of your site. And for me personally, micro front ends are a great thing. So if you're thinking of micro front end, then maybe give Cloudflare pages a think. So we've got to that stage of the video when I also need to plug my own stuff. If you like learning about the Jamstack, JavaScript or CMS, smash the subscribe button. Do not be a numpty. Do it right now. 
If you like this content and you want to do me a solid, please hit that like button. Hitting like basically will trick the YouTube algorithm into sharing my video to more people, so I very much appreciate that. And if you're interested in this sort of stuff and you want some weekly links sent to your inbox, I also do a newsletter, link below, subscribe to that and get some goodness. Otherwise, I hope you found some value from this video. Hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are in the world and 